Hello everyone, today we're looking at the Saturn IV Ultra Mini, which is basically what this is despite its official moniker being the Elegoo Mars 5 Ultra. Yeah, that's no joke, I could almost save you all some time by saying go and watch my Saturn IV Ultra review, but imagine it's got a smaller build volume. There are some differences here since this machine has a different resolution screen, and yes, that does mean there's a slight difference in print quality, but do I mean a good difference or a bad difference? Well, if I told you that, you wouldn't watch the rest of the video and you'd miss out on some other important details about this machine. So let's get on with it, a nice quick one today. Hi, I'm Ross and this is Fo Hammer Videos. So the point of the Mars is that it's a smaller machine and for years smaller meant entry level and therefore should have an entry level price like the Mars 3 at just over $100. But with the Mars 4 series the price has jumped to $200 and $300 for the standard and ultra respectively. And you'll agree that's much less focused on entry level pricing and more focused on getting the display's pixels as small as they can be with the world leading AVC of only 18 microns. So as we go in here's a Mars 4 history lesson. Unfortunately, due to the lack of sharpness from the light source, the invention of Elegoo's.gu file format and an inability to successfully implement anti-aliasing, an issue I still don't know if they've fixed a whole generation later, the Mars 4 was okay. But easy to ignore over cheaper similar sized competitors or my personal recommendation larger printers with larger pixels but ones that are still capable of the same print quality for the same price or less like the Saturn 8K, Saturn 2 and Mars 4 Max the latter of which was nothing like the other Mars 4 printers but that's a whole different story I've talked about in that video today's story is about the Mars 5 Ultra a 9K printer, just like the Mars 4, that doesn't have a 9K resolution, just like the Mars 4. So yeah, it's the same screen here as the last generation, but there's more to this package that makes it worth a generational leap forward. But yeah, the resolution is 8520 by 4320, and that is just shy of what four and a half times HD resolution of 1920 by 1080 actually is. Now, unlike the Saturn IV Ultra, there's no up and over lid here. This is unfortunately just a lid, but it does have a vent hole for those who want to connect up an extraction hose. All of the sockets for this printer are on the back right side. This includes the power socket for the external transformer along with the USB port. However, I've not bothered with the USB drive here since the printer works fine with Wi-Fi. Looking inside the machine, the build area is now 153 by 78 by 165 millimeters, matching the build volume of the Mars 4 Ultra and one centimeter shorter than the normal Mars 4. This marginally reduced height is most likely due to the size of the build plate, which, just like the Saturn 4s, has this strutted two-tiered approach with a huge gap in the middle. Just like I said in my Saturn IV Ultra review, this is a gap that resin gets stuck in after every print, and it's tricky to get out. The Saturn IV Ultra drips everywhere, but because this is a smaller build plate with a steeper taper, this is less of an issue with the smaller Mars. The Z-Arm has dual linear rails and a basic lead screw, but the main feature is the pressure sensing module which provides some cool modern features like resin level detection, debris detection, and it can even detect when a model hasn't stuck to the build plate, so that's kinda cool. But the auto leveling is not auto leveling, it's just auto zeroing, which personally is fine for me. All the brands are calling it this same thing and doing it in similar ways, it's just factually not auto leveling and this can cause compression issues in early layers of prints. But please don't blame Elegoo or the Mars 5 because it's not just this printer that causes this problem. In fact, it's been in every consumer printer so far. It's typically just more of an issue in printers with larger build plates and now printers with auto level, not leveling, sorry, auto zeroing. But layer compression issues, well that's a whole other topic, probably one for a channel much more technical than mine. It was just that the guys working at Table Flip Foundry, the guys who make the cones of calibration, they properly explained this issue to me very recently. Now I always have at least 5mm of supports on all my actual prints so I never see this issue on models anyway, but some people, for some reason, like to print directly from the plate without supports. Again though, this is not marks against Elegoo or this printer here, it was just that as I was reviewing this printer, I finally fully understood the industry-wide compression issue. So let me know if you want a separate video on that from me, who is simple-minded, so I may need to get my crayons out. 
But back to the features, as we can rock it through them, since you've probably all seen my Saturn IV Ultra review, if not, go and watch it, because that's definitely a printer worth considering. Sticking with the build plate, this has a great laser etched design. I'm happy to see these have become the norm because they work brilliantly. And I'm happy to see that the build plate connects to the Z-Arm using a latch rather than a bolt because this is just much easier to use. Once again though, just like the Saturn IV Ultra, this has a smooth taper, so you don't get the best grip when you're trying to lift and move the build plate. Moving on to the VAT, this is lined with PFA release film, and as Elegoo have said in their own marketing, ACF is prone to damage, has poor light transmittance, and can cause vertical lines in prints. All things that I've said myself and completely agree with. So to obtain great speed like this printer does, Elegoo have once again adopted the tilting vat. This peels the release film away at an angle which reduces pull forces allowing for successful prints with smaller support contact points and can print nearly three times faster than equivalent size printers. The time between each layer curing here is two to three seconds rather than six or more seconds waiting for the bed to slowly lift and retract. But yes, once again, there is a gap around the whole display area which has the potential to completely mess up your printer in the case of a huge spill. Please don't spill resin in this gap. There is a small protective lip on the inside for minor spills, but my hope is that the next generation of these implements a protective rubber gasket for additional safety. Moving on, Elegoo have packed in some of the more advanced features of the Saturn IV Ultra 2, like the camera. This is meant to detect failures, like prints falling from the build plate, but it is a bit limited as it can only see what's in its visual range, so it can't detect fails from the opposite corner of the plate when there are other models in front of it. And it also has a time-lapse feature which, obviously, generates time-lapses automatically, so long as the print is tall enough. There's no point having a time-lapse of a short print because it will just show the plate moving in the vat. But despite the really clear pictures that Elegoo show in their online marketing, this camera is limited because, well, there's no light. So at night time, the camera can hardly see anything, and in the day, there's still a dark black cover over the machine. However, at least with this machine, there is a transparent cover, so you can mount a light behind the cover, unlike the Saturn IV Ultra, which has an opaque rear panel. Now for the UI, this is once again in portrait orientation. It works, it's well translated, but due to the orientation, things are a little bit small, so stuff like the print progress on the info display during a print are a little bit tiny. But thankfully, this soon times out to a larger progress wheel, so you can actually see the status at a glance from across the room. It's a nice, pretty, and functional UI, but I think the landscape display was an attempt at interesting form at the cost of slightly more function. But this onboard operating system has some great functions too. You can adjust the printer settings on the machine itself mid-print and it has the same exposure test feature that the Saturn has. And I didn't realise before that you can actually set this to 4, 6 or 8 exposures. All you need to do is create a print file with the same model in quadrants, sextants or octants, slice it and import this into the tool on the printer's UI. It's a great feature where the implementation is far better than the explanation Elegoo have given for how it actually works, so I guess let me know if you want a video on this feature too. And I was surprised to find that this machine came with the new Chitubox Basic. I don't just mean the non-pro version of Chitubox, this is a new app called Chitubox Basic. It's basically the same but with a nice visual overhaul and a few less graphical issues for those of you who, like me, work with a dual monitor setup or people finding it just doesn't work with all the basic Windows features like snap layouts. But within here, the integration with Wi-Fi is nice as you can send your files directly to the printer from the app. You can monitor progress or a live video and even download your time lapses remotely. As a package, both the software and hardware for the Mars 5 Ultra is a bundle of solid features. It's a good step into a more high-tech offering and Elegoo is certainly leading the way on this front right now. Though, this does lack an integrated heater, which is something I and many other users would much prefer to be properly included and integrated into all modern heaters, or at least have a proper, solid, workable option as an optional extra, because I've got limited faith in the mini chamber heater they have upcoming, because this, like the inbuilt frozen heater in their Revo printer, blows heat into the top of the case, which is the last place you want heat, when you're trying to heat resin. I'll let you know more on that when I get one. 
but the Mars 5 Ultra is still really good, and with the tilting release module, it's fast without any ACF quality loss, just like the Saturn IV Ultra. And this is speed without any of the caveats of needing special resins or excessively large layer heights too. This is a fantastic printer, but what about print quality? Well, this machine now boasts a chip on board or carb light source just like the Saturn. The TLDR of these is that they are sharper with a more consistent UV output which is more even across the display surface than the classic matrix LED arrays. Yay! However, when I look at my print exposure tests, they unfortunately just aren't as sharp as what I've had from my Saturn IV or other 12K and 14K 10 inch printers. Now, as I said earlier, I had this exposure test method called into question as I was doing this review, and it was called into question due to the layer compression issue on consumer printers, something that should affect larger printers more than these small ones anyway. But for verification, I printed the new cones of calibration V3 at only one second per 20 micron layer. At this exposure time, all the success cones printed and all of the failure cones failed. Yay, tensile strength test passed. But, in XY accuracy, I was unable to get the sword to pass through the skull. However, at 0.9 seconds per layer, some of the success cones failed, but I was still unable to get the sword to pass through the skull. So, since I'm able to get both success cones and the sword through the skull on 14K and even 12K printers, even when using ACF and using this same resin, this result here is verifying that even though this printer has the smallest pixels on the market, there's still some unexpected XY expansion making the prints less accurate. So it will probably take more time to dial this thing in by adjusting things like light intensity. However, on the plus side, I am super happy to see that in this generation, anti-aliasing now fully works on this machine, though I did use the .ctb format and avoided .goo as I still just don't trust it. So should you buy this? Well, if it's within your budget and you cannot stretch to more, then probably yeah. This is still an incredibly solid entry-level printer, and by that I mean its size. It's a powerful machine with a ton of features, but before you wade in, I'd definitely compare the price of it to something with a larger display, like 9 inches plus. Something like the Mars 4 Max, or even a Saturn 8K or Saturn 2, if you can still find one cheaper than this. Yes, you may lose some modern techie stuff, but as many a current 3D printer owner will tell you, unless you're only printing some of the smallest things, you will quickly feel limited by the size of this build area. And for me, a larger printer is still far more convenient than some modern smart tech features. Now, whilst we've seen that the print accuracy isn't quite up to the standards of 10 inch 12 or 14K printers, at this scale, we are literally splitting hairs. The print quality is still excellent and better than most people need. We've been at excellent for ages. In fact, the only thing left to do is get the big 13 inch plus printers to have screens as detailed as this. So on an unrelated note, you might wanna subscribe if that's something that'll interest you and I'll see you back here in the next couple of weeks. But anyway, if you do go for this or any machine we've reviewed, please consider clicking our affiliate links in the description before you make your purchase. Also, so please do my friend James a favour, he's got a growing channel that also covers 3D printing called Rising Ape. So please go and check out his video on the Mars 5 Ultra 2 and also subscribe to his channel. But you know, use my affiliate links. In fact, I don't even know why I'm helping him. I already gave him the title he used for his Hey Gears Reflex review and that video beat mine. So it's the last time I give him a good title for a video. I guess I just like him and always have liked his content, so I'm happy for you to support him. So when you're done with my video, go and watch his. But again, come back here afterwards and use my links. Anyway, thanks for watching and a huge thanks to our members who get their name up in credits, early access to videos, exclusive videos with my raw opinions, and now Discord roles. Oh yeah, we have a Discord channel. Link in the description, please come and join us. Don't forget to come and subscribe to The Painting Phase, which is a separate hobby podcast I'm now part of. Again, link in the description. Please look at my description and have a look at the useful links I've got there. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up. Until next time, never cross the streams. That's advice from a film and just generally good for life. Fohammer out. Hammer out.